انزين الشيخ اسماعيل القصري has sent نجم الدين كوبرا to Armenia and when he went there شيطان started playing again because شيخ عمار بن ياسر he was illiterate also as well as شيخ اسماعيل القصري okay have you heard about the awliya who couldn't read and write but they were kutub of their time do you know about that type of people there are many of them okay so why because no one taught them okay but it's just raduni knowledge okay so then najmuddin kubra had the same problem started thinking this on the same way about sheikh ammar bin yasir and then ammar bin yasir once turned towards him said you know what najmuddin you are not going to succeed with me it's just when you're with Aulia, just put your character and don't think about strange things. So he said, Oh Najmuddin, you're not going to succeed with me, but you need a slap on your back from Sheikh Rosbahan al Farsi in Egypt. He said, Go to Egypt. Okay, so when uh, Sheikh Najmuddin Kubra went to Egypt, so he, first thing, so after a long journey, when he saw Sheikh Rosbahan al Farsi, Sheikh Rosbahan was making wudu. Okay, so maybe he was making wudu with that much water. Okay, so it's not washing, but you would say it is just wiping. So then, Najmuddin Kubra radiallahu anhu says, it came back again. So when I saw him, I said, look at him. He even doesn't know how to make wudu. Do you think that he's going to teach something? Then he says, uh, Sheikh Rosbahan just looked at me. Okay, and after completing his wudu, he just stood up and he was going to perform salah. So what did he do? He just uh, uh, sprayed water off his wudu on my face. Then Najmuddin Kubra says, I felt unconscious. And then I woke up and I saw the day of judgment. And people to be dragged into the hell. How? Do you know the ground on which people were standing? It was going as a carpet into the hellfire as if someone would be dragging from inside, you know. People were shouting and people were calling their shuyukh, etc. And, but there was some solid grounds on which some of the shuyukh and awliya was standing and choosing. And there were angels listening to them saying, go and bring that person. Okay, so he says, and so I saw Sheikh Rosbahan al-Farsi. I said, Sayyidi, Sayyidi, I am here, please. So, uh, um, he says, uh, Sheikh uh, Rosbahan just looked at me and then he warned me. So when I came to his uh, ground, he says, just, I just went to his feet kissing. Okay, do you know how to do sajda? So he wasn't doing sajda, but that's how he felt. Then uh, Sheikh Rosbahan, as Sheikh Ammar promised, he slapped on the back of Sheikh Nuruddin Kubra. Okay, saying, and <coughs> when he slapped, he said, Never criticize Uriya. That was only two words. <coughs> so when he slapped me on my back, I woke up. And when I woke up, Sheikh Rosbahan was standing there, okay, after his salat. So I went to him and then I did whatever I did in my dream. I kissed his feet, so he slapped on my back, saying, Never criticize the Uriya. Okay, and then he said, go back to Sheikh Ammar bin Yasser and get your tarbiyah completed by him. And pass on a message to him saying, uh, oh Sheikh Ammar, if you have a copper, then send it to Ruzbahan so he will convert it into the 24 karat gold. Okay, so then he didn't do anything, but only so that was the meeting and then he just went back to Faraz. Okay, so many karamat. First of all, there was no mobile phones and there was no anything. So how he would know that this person is coming from Sheikh Ammar? And how he knew about the, the, uh, about the slap on his back, exactly on his back, you know, as Sheikh Ammar said. And so many things, you know. So then he says he went back. Okay. So, so as we can see, Sheikh Najmuddin Kubra is founder of one of the huge historical, the quickest ones, as well as his qutub. But he's mentioning the experiences that he had. So it is really good lesson for us. If you have any evil thought or maybe you are committing some certain sin, which you are ashamed, 
to mention in front of your share. So this um, a story is it's good lesson for us to not to hide anything. Did you understand? Okay, because what uh, Sheikh Nasruddin Kuba was having the thoughts is very bad, you know, but he didn't hide. So it is good for you to be open with your Sheikh. Because there is no any aura between you and your Sheikh. You do not have aura. Did you understand? So as long as you have chosen your Sheikh, so you have to be very open with him. Okay, anyway. So then, uh, Najmuddin Kubra radiallahu anhu started returning back from uh, Egypt. And on his way back, he went through Alexandria. <laughs> and as you know, it is the period... <coughs> it is the period in which... Um, <coughs> Sorry. In which Abu Tahir al Silafi, Amir al Mubin fil Hadith, one of the greatest Muhabbid scholars, was that. So it was something about um, um, 575th Hijrah. Okay, so what will be the age of Najmuddin Kubra then? 575. How old will be uh, Sheikh Najmuddin Kubra? 25. Sorry? 25. Excellent, 25 years old. So you can say the real start of Sheikh Najmuddin Kubra in Tariq was at the age of 35. Okay, so then Sheikh Najmuddin Kubra by himself says that I met one of the muhaddithin of that time and his age was over 100. Okay, and as you know, um, uh, and, uh, Sheikh Abu Tahir, uh, Imam Abu Tahir al Silafi passed away when he was 105 years old. Okay, so it was uh, some, some, something about uh, at the, uh, he was maybe at the age of 102 or 103 years old when Najmud bin Kubra went to learn some hadith from him. And then he went back. And when he went back, actually, uh, he went back always to Armenia. And he never left his sheikh, Sheikh Ammar bin Yasser, till he did gain the Al Wilaya al Kubra and Al Wilaya al Sura, both. And after that, he came back to Kharaz. Okay, and if you remember, we did mention how he has been killed. Do you remember? So after listening to the Siman, etc. So, and also, just to remind you, the last thing uh, for, uh, uh, about Najmuddin Kuru, anhu, it is the meeting between him and Sheikh Fakhruddin al-Razi. Okay, so we did mention before, so just because it's a good story. So, uh, Fakhruddin al-Razi, Shafi'i Ashari, as well as uh, Najmuddin Kubra, both scholars. So when he came, as you know, Fakhruddin Razi wouldn't walk on his own. Okay? Do you know, do you remember Imam Malik, king of the scholars? So Fakhruddin Razi was king of, he, of the scholars of his time. So he wouldn't walk alone. There would be thousands of students after him. Some of them is uh, holding the, you know, the joke for wudu, etc. You know? So king, you can say. Because he was so famous. Anyway, so he came to um, Sheikh Najmuddin Kubra saying, Oh, Sheikh Sir, uh, please, uh, actually, and there was some debate between uh, um, uh, Fakhruddin Razi and some of the scholars in front of Najmuddin Kubra. It's a very beautiful uh, debate. And maybe, inshallah, if we will have a chance in the future, I will mention. Anyway, after the debate, uh, Sheikh Fakhruddin Razi said, Imam Fakhruddin Razi said, uh, Sheikh Sir, Imam Sir, please, uh, as you know, I'm a scholar, but now I want the tariqa, tasawwuf. Please, can you take me to the tasawwuf? Uh, Imam Najmuddin Kubra said, you will be unable to take it. Uh, Imam Fakhruddin Razi said, why, why not? I came here only for tasawwuf. Okay, then Najmuddin Kubra, radiallahu anhu, said, okay, so in that case, just go into the khulwa. Okay, do you know the childa? Do you know the khulwa? It's a small, tight room in which if you will stand up, your head will be hitting the roof. Okay, so you can just lie down and there will be small space for you just to turn over. So in that, in that place, you have to spend some certain period of uh, time, up to 40 days, making zikr and nothing else. Okay, so that is the one of the ways of, you can say, even Qadri Tariqa. So anyway, um, Najmuddin Kubra ordered Fakhruddin Razi to go into the Khulwa. And when he went into the Khulwa, uh, um, Najmuddin Kubra made self of a knowledge of Fakhruddin Razi. And Fakhruddin Razi understood that there is something wrong is going on. His knowledge is gone. His knowledge is gone, taken. Najmuddin Kubra made self of it. So he 
cried, shouted. He said, oh, what are you doing with me? Where is my knowledge? So he said, if you want the path of Tasawwuf, that is your treatment. Fakhr bin Razi said, no, I cannot do it. Uh, please, can, can you give back my knowledge? So he said, didn't I tell you that you will be unable to bear the way of Tasawwuf? Okay, but you know, it doesn't mean that if you want to go to the Tasawwuf, you have to be ignorant. But each of us, we have our idol. Okay, so our idol, maybe the idol of my, my idol could be Tahajjud. Did you understand? And the way of Tasawwuf is Tajreed. Tajreed, you know the meaning of Tajreed? Being free from everything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so um, being engaged into the dunya, or being engaged even into the Akhirah, it is against Tajreed, you know? Okay, so sometimes it could be that the good practicing that you do, it could be one of the misguiding things that will take you to the hell, you know? Okay, so that's why maybe Imam Najmuddin Kubra uh, found that knowledge of Fakhr bin Razi is his idol. So he just wanted to take it for some certain period of time in which he would purify himself and after that he would just return it back to him. Anyway, so after that he just returned it back to him and then he said, Now you, Fakhr bin Razi, now uh, you are, uh, we do recognize you. But before we was hoping you to be one of us. But because you are, was unable, but still you are one of the followers. So that will be sufficient for you. And that's it. And Fakhr bin Razi went back to Iran and uh, Najmuddin Kubra just uh, remained in Kharazm. That's it. Okay, so uh, it is, you can say, one of the karamat of Najmudi Kubra. Maybe if there will be some of the Salafi brothers, he may mention some certain ahadith saying, oh, you know, Allah never takes off a knowledge from the chest of a people. I say it is wrong understanding of the hadith. Why? Because if some car crash will happen, is it possible that some scholar can forget his knowledge? If it's not Allah has taken his knowledge, then who did? Did you understand? So the meaning of that hadith is, Allah will not finish off the knowledge by making the scholars to forget, but by taking their arwah. So it is totally different meaning. Okay, so anyway, so that is uh, about um, uh, Najmuddin Kubra radiallahu anhu.